My name is William Andrew Bates. I went to Chicago Vocational High School, a.k.a. CVS, and Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, home of the Southern University Jaguars. Oh, some of the best times of my life playing in, uh, with Coach Maiden in South Shore Baseball and Travel Ball. Uh, so many great memories, so many great lessons that were learned that, that still stick with me even to this day about perseverance, about making something out of nothing, and just about fighting and having that grit and determination to make sure that you pull out a victory even in the midst of, of a lot of other things that might have been going on. We still had to learn how to fight and grind our way out of some tough situations. Oh, I, I played so uh, I found out about Coach Maiden's program um, through our South Shore Baseball affiliate program. As you know, during that time, in the early '80s and late '80s, it was you know you you had to be a part of of a community organization in order to play baseball. And South Shore was big, and so um, with Coach Maiden, Coach Maiden had uh, one of the uh, Pony League teams, American Legion teams, um, and, you know, and then start having his travel teams and. He thought I was good enough to maybe just play a game or two, and he put me on the team, and the rest is history. Oh, we went to Wisconsin. We went to Cincinnati. We went to West Virginia. But my favorite trip of all time with, 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 with Coach Maiden was Canada. That was the most – that was one of the greatest experiences of my young adult life, and I, I was able to go there twice at age 16 and age 17. We played actually against – uh, the Canada's national team. We played against teams from uh, Korea or Tokyo. One of the team, they was from somewhere over there. The experience was was just great, first class all the way. And it, it actually, it was the first time that I took a plane because we had to fly from Chicago to Detroit, and then we had to take a bus the rest of the way into Canada. But it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Oh man, some of the guys that I met and friends that I've made over the years uh, are, are almost too numerous to count. But but of course there are select few. Uh, Corey Gilkey, Ralph Sullivan, Nate Moore, uh, Nate Benson, uh, my boy Breeze, uh, Raymond Collier, just just a host of guys. Sean Stalin, uh, just a host of great guys who all love the game, and we all grew up in the hardcore um, city of Chicago. Um, it's a rough neighborhood, but when we got on that baseball field. The camaraderie that we had, even though guys were from different parts of the city, in some instances, the camaraderie that we had was was something that I'll never forget and still is intact today. Because if we see each other today, all we do is reminisce and talk about our time playing baseball with you, Coach. My God, how long we got? How long we got? <laughs> well, my thoughts on Coach Maiden is this, real simple. A guy who loved young black men and gave us an opportunity to not have to rely upon the streets for survival or trying to be involved in street activity that would have gotten a lot of us in trouble. Um, and baseball became our outlet. And Coach Maiden became that father figure that a lot of us did not have in our lives. Um, when a lot of us didn't have the money to travel or, or to have a meal before or after the game, you know, uh, Coach Maiden would always, always find a way, even if she didn't have it. And we don't know how he got the money. We don't know. We ain't never asked him. But one day I'm going to have to ask him where he get the money from. But, but he was always generous enough to go into his pockets for us as young black men, and it was it was very, very important how he wanted to make sure that, that he positioned us. Um, even myself, with, with talking with Coach Kadar at Southern University to go to battle, go to bat for me, to get him to give me a, a scholarship without ever seeing me play a game or an inning of baseball, but just on Maiden's word, I was able to get a scholarship and wind up playing there for five years, graduated, won three championships, met my wife, still married to her to this day. That's almost 28 years ago. Um, but but just just incredible, just an incredible, uh, kind-hearted and sweethearted guy. Oh, man, we we loved it because, um, one, one, we knew we were going to play uh, some good competitive baseball when we, when we went into those uh, white suburban areas. But two, it was for us that, that mantle of proving that we belonged on the field with them. And, and sometimes, Coach, Coach Maiden, you didn't even know, but we, we would have a game within a game. And uh, they would be talking their smack, and I keep it clean like that, and we'd be talking our smack right with them. So if they called us out of our names, and sometimes we were called out of our names, 
you know, we, we were, the racial epithets were flowing from the dugout or even when, when they were in the field, but it never moved any of us. And we looked forward to just trash talking back with them, but really beating them and showing them a good brand of baseball along with it. Uh, it was, it was, it was great. It was great. And it just prepared us for life because we understood that, you know, what happens on the baseball field happens in the real world. And if you can just deal with it on the baseball field, you can definitely deal with it in the workplace. Well, you know, and I understand that periodically there has there has to be those that go before the previous generation. Somebody has to be the trailblazer. Somebody has to uh, make the sacrifices. Somebody has to be the first ones to do it, um, to, to work out the rough spots. But they're the first ones to do it to make everybody else believe that it's possible. And things always should get better. After you've had somebody take that initial step, things should get better. And, and it's good that they are able to play in bigger tournaments on better fields um, with better uniforms, um, better equipment. Because, man, sometimes we might have had three helmets, four helmets, just four. And two of them didn't have, one of them didn't have cushion in them. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it work. It, did, it didn't bother us. It, it, it was what it was. And to see this generation of guys now with with access to having the, the, the special specialized training, whether they need it for hitting or for fielding or whether it is just travel and to see what that looks like is, is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Definitely, I would say this program was before its time back in my day. Um, and I was actually talking to a couple of guys and was just telling them that if we had what this generation had uh, when we played with all the talent that we had, a um, lot, a lot of just raw, raw talent, um, a lot of it needed to be honed a little bit better but just a lot of raw talent. A lot of guys love the game of baseball. Um, but but to see where things are now um, still gives us hope that it's going to continue to to grow the game and grow grow the, grow the players as well. It's a strong young man on and off the field. Yep. Man, what a ride, what a ride, what a ride. Uh, the impact that you've made on the lives of, in my life and the lives of others has been tremendous, heartfelt, and will never, ever, ever uh, be forgotten uh, because your sacrifice has definitely produced some seeds that are still growing um, where I see a lot of guys are, are now teaching their own sons and their, their children are walking in their footsteps, even if it's not in baseball, it's in some other sport because they were coached by Coach Maiden and, and your legacy will always live on, Coach. Yes, sir, Coach. I get behind you all the way from Louisiana. 